The Kaduna State Governor Malam Nasser El Rafai today gave a strong commitment to the arrest and prosecution of those already identified as being behind the southern Kaduna violence. Governor El Rafai, who frowned on the approach of the previous administration in handling the issue, vowed that no one will escape justice this time around. Typical southern Kaduna crisis. The dispute between two persons becomes unresolved or elevated to group dispute. Uh, people get, get killed, property destroyed, curfew is imposed, a commission of inquiry is set up immediately after normal sea returns, a white paper is issued by the government, it's put in the drawer, no one ever got prosecuted for any of these offenses. In our opinion, looking at all all the crises that have happened, and I personally and m members of my co-team have read all the reports long before this happened, you know. There has been uh, 10 such crises in 36 years in Kaduna State. So we knew that it happens every 3.6 years. On basis of probability, we knew that in our tenure, one was likely to happen. Because what is happening now? is largely as a result of what happened and was unresolved in 2011. And, they, and, and at that time, our understanding was there were three problems. There were the killings in southern Kaduna. There was cattle rustling and banditry in northern and central Kaduna. Mm -hmm. And there were urban gangs, you know, these uh, young people that take drugs and just come and kill and attack anyone they see at random. They call them Sarasuka gangs. So we knew that we had to address these problems. But the cattle rustling, we understood it fairly quickly because essentially the, it was a Fulani phenomenon. They steal cattle. They hide in the forest ranges around Kaduna, Zamfara, Sokoto, and so on. So we knew that if we went to that forest and flushed them out, we'd degrade their capacity. And today we have over 300 young Fulanese between 18 and 30 in custody for kidnapping, for cattle rustling, and robbery. The southern Kaduna was more difficult because we didn't understand it. And this is why we needed a high-profile committee like the Agwai Committee to look at it. And they did. We established the committee in July. By the end of August, they submitted a report. They went around southern Kaduna. They talked to communities. They talked to everybody. And they came back with certain findings and recommendations. And the findings were very enlightening even to me who is full I need. Kaduna State Governor Malam Nasser El Rafai. To security matters here in the West, the kidnappers of the Isheri North Estate Secretary, Mr. Dayo Adekoya, are demanding the sum of 100 million naira as ransom. Eleven gunmen were said to have stormed the estate here in Lagos and began shooting into the air before taking the victim away around 1 a.m., throwing residents into panic. The residents of Isheri North Estate looking extremely shocked. One of them could not hold back his emotions as he wept openly. Others looking confused about the kidnap of the estate secretary, Mr. Dayo Adekoya. From our findings, the kidnappers gained entrance into the compound with this ladder. They could not go in through the main door, but eventually found their way into the house through this window. A resident of the estate explains the trauma they all went through while the kidnappers were operating. I started hearing gunshots around midnight. I was scared, didn't know what happened. Subsequently, started seeing police vans and all that. I had to wait till morning. When I woke up, went to the gate, found out that um, someone had been kidnapped and um, some security guys killed in the process and um, some injured. For over four hours, the estate was held hostage. And now the Lagos State Commissioner for Police, Mr. Fatayo Washeni, and his team are here to inspect the home of the victim. The reason for coming here is not to come and do rhetorics and uh, be talking what is not, is the practicability of the whole thing to do a thorough assessment of the estate um, and see how we can work with the households here, um, considering the challenges, the security challenges, the challenges to policing an estate of this nature. This is borderless. You've seen the porosity 
you've also seen how the vulnerability of um, the households that are living here. There is no society that is uh, completely free of crime. Um, in between the time we had the last one and now, it's um, a kind of time. He also takes a walk to the end of the road through the kidnappers' escape route. There are reports that the kidnappers have established contact already. This is the second time in six months that the estate will be witnessing a kidnap. The last one was in September 2016, when four landlords were taken away during their routine early morning exercise. From that very worrisome development, let's cross over to Abuja. Here's Markwe Hogan. Markwe. Well, thank you and hello, Ijoma. Eight members of the bar have been nominated by the Nigerian Bar Association, the NBA, for appointment as justices of the Supreme Court of Nigeria. They are Olisa Bakuba, Anthony Idigbe, Yunus Usman, and five others out of the 89 shortlisted. The NBA explains that after a rigorous process done by a select committee chaired by the president of the NBA, Abubakar Mahmoud, the names of the applicants that met the mark have been sent to the acting chief justice of Nigeria, Walter Onogen for approval. The acting CGN had earlier forwarded a request to the president of the NBA to nominate suitable candidates for consideration as justices of the Supreme Court of Nigeria. Staying with the judiciary, the trial of Justice Sylvester Nguta, a Supreme Court justice for alleged corruption, has been stored following the withdrawal of the lead prosecutor, Mr. Charles Adiogun Phillips. At the resumed trial before Justice James Soho of the Federal High Court in Abuja, Mr. Adi Ogun Phillips announced his withdrawal from the case based on personal reasons. Although the prosecution team declined comment on why Mr. Adi Ogun Phillips withdrew from the case, lawyer to Justice Unguta, Emeka Itiaba, SEN, says the defense team are prepared for the trial. And the chief accountant of the Federal High Court in Abuja, Mr. Awoyemi Adisa, has told an FCT High Court that the annual basic salary of Justice Adeni Ademola is about 6.3 million naira, excluding allowances and other emoluments. Mr. Adisa, who is testifying as the 13th prosecution witness, told the court that Justice Ademola earns a basic salary, a basic monthly salary, that is, of 528,638 naira, alongside other allowances, such as a monthly welfare of 305,000 naira and a 5.4 million naira furniture allowance paid every four years. Our correspondent, Omelogo Nadi, reports. Four more witnesses were called by the prosecution Thursday at the trial of Justice Adeniyi Ademola and two others answering to an 18 counts charge at an FCT High Court in Abuja. The Deputy Chief Registrar of the Federal High Court, who tendered certified two copies of records of proceedings relevant to the matter, an investigation officer from the Office of the Department of State Services, a ballistician attached to the Firearms Services Laboratory of the Police Force Criminal Investigation Department, and the Chief Accountant of the Federal High Court, Abuja. Led in evidence by the prosecution counsel, Shegun Jegede, the Chief Accountant of the Federal High Court, Mr. Awoyemi Adisa, says Justice Ademola earns 6.3 million naira annually as his basic salary, alongside other allowances as the overseas medical checkup, which is said amounted to $6,300 for 2016 alone. He also says judges are often paid varying Esther codes by foreign governments who periodically organize seminars and workshops which the court cannot account for. A few more witnesses and we are done. The 14th witness, Jeremiah Tanimu, an assistant commissioner of police, saddled with the ballistics of the two firearms found in the possession of Justice Ademola, told the court the firearms are prohibited and lethal and can only be licensed by the president of Nigeria on discretion. He referred to the Firearms Act of 1990 in his statement but was unable to provide the court with relevant documents to substantiate his statements. We are ready for everything. You've seen what has been dumped on us today, but we are ready for it. The matter is adjourned until Friday, February 10, 2017. Omelogo Nadi Channels Television News. Away from the court, 
The acting chairman of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, Ibrahim Mago, has told the House of Representatives how the commission recovered over $9.7 million from the home of an individual last week. The EFCC boss disclosed this while appearing before the House of Representatives Committee on Financial Crimes as part of the ongoing 2017 budget defense. The Minister of Works, Power and Housing, Babatunde Fashola, who was also at the session, says the country needs to amend its procurement process as delays in the process have a direct impact on the Nigerian economy. Our correspondent, Larry Lassisi, reports. The Minister of Works, Power and Housing, arriving to face the House of Representatives Committee on Works, is here to defend the 2017 budget allocation of the Ministry of Works. But he begins by outlining how the ministry performed with the 2016 budget. There is no state of the, in the country out of the 36 states, there is not one state, to the best of my knowledge, where one road project or the other is not going on. He, however, highlights the need to amend the country's procurement process. For a nation that has this backlog of infrastructure to fill. The process is too long. It takes too much time. And we need to shorten that time. Meanwhile, in another part of the Assembly, the acting chairman of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission is before the House Committee on Financial Crimes as part of the ongoing budget defense process. He outlines some of the challenges facing the Commission. Length of time it takes court to conclude cases remain a source of concern. Of course, one of our greatest challenges is corruption fighting back. He says the commission is, however, making some impact. We raided the house and we recovered 9.72 million US dollars cash and about 750 pounds cash. 750,000 750, pounds. Now, these engagements will continue into next week as both arms of government work to ensure that the 2017 budget is passed as soon as possible. Lanre Lassese, Channels Television News. When the news at 10 returns, Nigeria successfully raises $1 billion in its oversubscribed Eurobond issue. But that's some business news. Do join us again.